recently we covered the incredible reports made by a Russian known as Mr. Kasatskin, deep within a coal mine in Rostov. Dated at over 300 million years old, it is these types of finds which are often suppressed from the public. It's seen by some as an imperative task to conceal such information, and this next object is no less fascinating or controversial. Dated as being a mere 50 million years younger than our prints deep within the mine, another artifact, thankfully exposed to the world. The stone, with a mysterious apparent chip embedded within its form, was discovered accidentally by local fisherman Viktor Morozov in Labinsk, a town in Krasnodar Krai. Understandably perplexed by this marvelous find, he quietly notified local university professors regarding his intriguing discovery. After donating the stone to these said professionals, it was discovered that the strange alien object embedded within this pebble is indeed a processing microchip of a clearly unknown origin. Amazingly, it has also been found to still contain processing data which has not yet been deciphered, which when captured and translated could quite possibly shed light on a once existing advanced civilization here on Earth. Or more, it could also, in all possibility, give us a tiny glimpse at an ancient alien civilization who are at this time possible candidates as the creators of this advanced and very ancient chip. The team began to discuss the confusing artifact with other professionals within similar fields of study, and predictably, it was not long until debunking efforts engulfed the investigations. A number of prominent figures coming forth to passionately denounce such research being made public or indeed being undertaken, with explanations of it somehow only being a mere fossil subsequently being publicly launched, the stone catalogued as such by the majority of the trusting public. This clearly in staunch rejection of reality. The fragment of a once larger microchip contains information we are yet to extract and decipher information of clearly ancient and possibly alien origin. We just hope the specialists bestowed with the task of this important research now convinced they have discovered that which will eventually rewrite the history books do not discover that the object has disappeared without trace, a fate suffered by many other artifacts stumbled upon within our modern age, artifacts of an unexplained or otherworldly nature. Just who or what could have created this chip? What was its purpose? We will endeavor to keep an eye on this research. There has been a wealth of documented artifacts found within very ancient sediment, coal seams, minerals, and even stones and geodes, all indicating that a vastly different story has taken place upon our Earth to that of what the majority stubbornly persist in assuming. So many pieces of evidence, in fact, it seems that it has been an impossible task for an unknown group of tyrants who, for whatever reason, have attempted to conceal or suppress such discoveries, or more importantly, hide the historical tales in which they are all trying to tell us. And these next three are no exception. The Lanzhou Stone, discovered in 1999 by Jilin Wang, in a remote mountainous area in northwest China. Upon research being undertaken, it was established to be unexplainable. The rock is made of an unknown material, and the metal artifact embedded within may quite possibly have alien origins. As reported in the Lanzhou Morning News on June 26, 2002, more than 10 geologists, physicists, and other specialists from such institutes as the National Land Resources Bureau of China, the Institute of Geology and Minerals Research, and the School of Resources and Environment all eventually studied the possible origins of the stone. The results of these examinations, the possible explanations for its formation or indeed origin, were never released. Amazingly, however, the scientists unanimously concluded that the stone is currently one of the most valuable in China or possibly the world. When pressed for further explanation, it was disclosed that the rock will apparently be extremely important for future research and, quote, archaeological studies. Any further disclosure regarding the scientists' discoveries has remained elusive. The Wolfseg iron has a similarly suppressed story, over 20 million years old, 
this extremely ancient and clearly once worked cube of iron may also have come from space. Indeed, that is a conclusion many educated researchers arrived at. Although attempts to discredit such claims involve recent testing, which has shown the cube lacks usual elements present in meteoric material, they all avoid mentioning its strong magnetic characteristics, a signature uncannily similar to that found in meteorites and other objects with an otherworldly origin. It was discovered when a workman at the Braun Iron Foundry in Schoendorf, Austria, was breaking up a block of lignite that had been mined at Wolfsegg. In 1886, mining engineer Adolf Gurlt reported the object to the Natural History Society of Bonn, who noted that the object was coated with a thin layer of rust, was made of iron, and had a specific gravity of 7.75. Early descriptions of the object appeared in contemporary editions of the scientific journals Nature and L'Astronomie, identified at the time by numerous scientists as being a fossil meteorite. Now virtually unanimously concluded to have been man-made, it has thus been unexplainable. Stolen at one point, it was strangely returned to another museum, now without a compelling mainstream explanation. It has simply been condemned to the history books as some form of elaborate hoax. Impossible artifacts have been found in the most unusual of places. For example, a seemingly unbreakable piece of unknown metal, possibly a ring of ancient or according to man's official history, alien origin found within a geode encapsulated for over 200 million years. Most people begin with good intentions, but sadly, are often allured away by various means of temptation, subsequently allowing such relics to disappear into the archives of the past. This report and the accompanying image, it seems, is all that we will ever see regarding this compelling artifact a mysterious fate experienced by many such artifacts. For example, sadly, only the Wolfsegg iron now remains in the public domain for future testing. What secret within our past is felt by some clearly powerful people as an imperative to keep concealed from the majority of the world? Maybe the question should be, will we ever be ready or indeed able to find out? In a small place once known as Mineral County, in West Virginia rests a very special rock. Known as Waffle Rock, it is a huge piece of something very ancient. Lodged in the ground where it must have been struck many thousands of years earlier. No longer visible to the public due to it being several meters below the water level of a dam built in the area which forced the residents of Mineral County away forever. After a petition by many of the locals, two pieces of waffle rock were thankfully preserved for future study. One stayed relatively local to the area, while the other is preserved within the Smithsonian Institute. Dr. Jack B. Epstein of the U.S. Geological Survey said, quote, Four sets of joints are apparent in the waffle rock. Just what could have made waffle rock clearly remains a mystery, and any hypothesis that links it to possibly having been part of a larger artificial craft quickly shouted down as absurd. The truth is, no one really knows what Waffle Rock is, but such hostility directed towards any extraterrestrial possibilities is something we always find interesting. Waffle Rock appears to have a metallic gridding which runs through some of its form. Interestingly, a case we cover in another video regarding another less mentioned find of a very similar, strange suspected rock formation was found nearby. Were these fragments once pieces of an ancient spacecraft? We find it highly suspicious that the powers that be chose to submerge such a curious thing, subsequently hiding it from the world. Lake Superior, the largest of the North American Great Lakes, it is also the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. Believed to have first been inhabited 10,000 years ago, after the retreat of the last ice age. However, there exists copper mines upon many of the lake's islands, which many researchers have concluded to be prehistoric. A sophisticated array of tunnels litters the islands, or more specifically, all of North America. Scarred by ancient mine pits as deep as 150 feet, carbon-14 testing of wood remains found in sockets of copper artifacts indicated they are at least 5,700 years old although artifacts and evidence at some sites 
have suggested a date far older than what has been put forward. For example, some investigators believe that the mines were not even built by humans, but are the remains of a sophisticated mining operation that was once undertaken by alien visitors many thousands of years ago. Similar in scale to the ancient Carolina mica mines, mica being a material which we use in electrical components. It must be noted that all of these prehistoric mines show evidence of being abruptly abandoned. Whether this is evidence of the death of an unknown king or queen, or evidence for catastrophe is unknown. All along Lakeshore are vestiges of this once highly successful ancient operation. The most astonishing of remnants catalogued publicly has to be the enormous lump of pure copper found in 1771 near the bank of the Ontonagon River. In 1945, it was floated downriver on a raft by a James K. Paul and was eventually appropriated by an agent of the United States government. It was then shipped to Detroit and on to Washington, where it eventually slipped into the bowels of the Smithsonian. Known as the Ontonagon Boulder, it weighs 3,708 pounds. It was apparently well known to Native Americans. According to the Keweenaw Bay Indian community, the boulder was used by tribe members to make offerings to its manitou, or spirit, to seek improvement in their health and well-being. Just how old is the Ontonagon boulder? Or indeed, the mine from which it came? Although many would like you to believe the mines are less than 5,000 years of age, we think many factors surrounding them suggest that they are far older than that. In 1972, a French factory began importing high-quality rare uranium ore from Oklo in Africa's Gabon Republic. Many quickly began to wonder where they had acquired such a difficult thing to make. It turned out that the uranium had come from a place which should have rewritten the history books, yet it seems to have been quietly brushed into the archives of the past. They found the site of origin had functioned as a large-scale nuclear reactor. Amazingly, though, this reactor was in operation some 1.8 million years ago and was functioning for over 500,000 years. These unbelievable claims were not made lightly or indeed by anybody. They were conclusions by some of the greatest minds on Earth. For example, Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, former head of the United States Atomic Energy Commission and Nobel Prize winner for his work in the synthesis of heavy elements, explained to the press why he believed it wasn't a natural phenomenon and must have been a man-made nuclear reactor. He stated that for uranium to burn in a reaction, very precise conditions are needed. The water must be extremely pure, much purer than exists anywhere naturally. The material, U-235, is also necessary for this type of nuclear fission to occur, one of the isotopes not found naturally in uranium. Additionally, Several specialists in reactor engineering have also come forward to testify that they believe the uranium in Oklo could not have been rich in U-235 enough for a reaction to take place naturally. It must have, somehow, been a man-made operation. And new research has only deepened the mystery, confirming that water regulated the nuclear reactions in a cyclic pattern similar to that of a geyser. Alex Meshik and his colleagues at Washington University of St. Louis have determined that the Oklo reactor, which comprises several separate sites, ran for 30 minutes and then shut off for two and a half hours before starting over. The time is characteristic of water infiltrating rocks and then being boiled off once reaction started. When the water all boiled away, the reaction stopped until new water percolated back down. This geyser-like activity also prevented a runaway reaction. It's amazing it didn't explode, Message said. Instead, it efficiently released energy in short pulses for an extremely long period of time. Just who could have possibly been around over 1.8 million years ago? Or more specifically, able to enrich uranium and create nuclear power? Is man's history on Earth really that old? It seems, according to numerous nuclear specialists and the compelling evidence they present, that is exactly the case. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. 
Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.